Hello my creative friends, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing really well, I'm feeling very chill today. Um, let me paint a bit of a picture for you. Um, the sky's a little grey uh, here in Sydney and um, the rain is gently falling. It's just a really lovely sound. There's a little breeze. It's, it's not too cold. I've got the front door open just to let the breeze through. And uh, I'm full of peanut butter, so everything is a-okay today. I'm having another pyjama day. That's why I'm not showing my face because it's really not, um, you know, I shouldn't be putting it <laughs> on video out on the internet today. And my little dog Poppy is just snoring in his bed next to me. And uh, to be honest, it smells a little bit like wet dog out here. <laughs> he just loves playing in the rain. And when he comes back, his hair's all you know, messed up and fluffy. And obviously doesn't smell very nice for a little while. But um, I'm sure I can bear with it. So I'm going to create a new page in my journal. Not this one. This is just a background I was playing with um, and on, on another day. But I'm going to do something probably quite chill today, I think, because that's how I'm feeling. Um, and I'm going to start with um, some of my favorite colors. I think I'm going to do some blues and uh, maybe lime greens again because I just love them so much. And let me see. I'm going to start with a light blue first. And maybe some of this beautiful um, sort of turquoisey green and some lime green as well or a bit of a light green. I'm going to start with these three beautiful colors and I'm even going to use a brush today. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, so I even had to wake Poppy up because he was snoring so loudly that I thought you might hear him in the background. Can you believe it? He's only three and a half kilos and he's just snoring as loudly as a man sometimes. Scary. Okay, anywho, so I've put a little bit of those three colors on my palette here and I'm applying it with my favorite brush. Um, and just like when I paint with my fingers, I apply the paint until there's hardly anything left either on my fingers or at the end of my brush. So that way the colors sort of um, blend quite easily together where they meet. So I'm not doing anything special here. I'm just filling in the two pages with a little bit of color and just trying to spread the colors a little bit evenly. So it just gives me a nice background to start with. Next I'm going to apply a bit of metallic and this is a Lumiere paint. It's a really gorgeous greeny blue iridescent uh, acrylic paint. I'll put a, all the supplies on the blog of course so you can check it out if you need to see a product that you might want to try out. And I'm just putting it a bit of everywhere. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of a close up here so hopefully you can see the beautiful metallic color. It's absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love this effect. May not show through that much in the final pages, but that's okay. You just never know. Now I'm going to use a stamp that I carved out of a, a, a rubber eraser. And I'm using some aquamarine ink just to give a little bit of texture without showing too much because I don't want the stamps to be the primary focus. I'm just stamping here and there and cleaning as I go along. You can see the pattern I created. Quick blast of heat to heat set the, the ink, just to be sure. And I'm just rummaging in my little stash of handmade um, stamps for another one. Just to continue adding a little bit more texture. This time I'm using some white ink. It's not very strong, but again, it will be good to give me a little bit of, a, of texture and detail in the background. And um, I love this stamp, really like it. It's just a pretty pattern that is just hand drawn and carved out of rubber. Moving on to a little bit of gold and another one of my favorite hand carved stamps. I get a lot of, of uh, inquiries about my stamps and one day I promise I will do a video um, or an actual workshop showing you how to make them. Here you go, you can see the gold imprint here. It's very subtle but it's pretty at the same time. Love this one, really do. 
And now I'm applying a little bit of um, gelato in similar colors to the acrylic paint just to sort of strengthen the colors a little bit. But to be honest, I could have skipped that step because it didn't add a lot of difference. But it's just, you know, just a little bit more intense colors, I guess. But it's, yeah, if you're following me along with this tutorial, just, just skip it. I'm using a bit of hot pink and a brand new stencil from, I think it's, this one is by Stencil Girl. I'll have to check, but again, I'll put all the supplies in the blog. And absolutely love this effect. This is the first time using this one and it's just love it. How cool is this pattern? Looks absolutely amazing. I'm using the word absolutely a lot today. It's absolutely, absolutely crazy. <laughs> Another hand calf stamp with a bit more white ink just to add a bit more detail on top and tone down that, uh, that pink pattern I just stenciled. And you know, as I go along, I just sort of stop every now and then, obviously, to think what I'm going to do next. Here I grab this rubber tool that helps create a bit of pattern. I can't remember where I got that from. I think it was from a, a sort of hardware store actually or craft store, but it was so long ago I don't really remember. But I'm applying a bit of yellow acrylic paint just to get a bit of texture. And once it's dry, um, I just love the effect that I get. It's a little bit bumpy and raised in some areas and it's pretty cool bit of grungy texture. Now I'm going to use this um, dimensional paint that I bought probably 15 years ago. I'm not kidding. Never use it. Some of the tubes were a bit um, just dead so I threw them out but whatever was still going well I just thought I'd just try it out. They work on paper and wood and that sort of thing so why not use them if you've got them. So I'm using a blue metallic and a sort of light green color. And I'm going to add a few more details with the white version of that paint. And then I should have looked at the back of the <laughs> of those bottles because I realized later on that it said the drying time is 48 hours. What? 48 hours? We're artists. We don't have that kind of time. Come on. So anyway, I had to use my hairdryer for what felt like probably 48 hours and dry it as best as I could. I knew it wasn't completely dry, but it was mostly touch dry. I just couldn't wait this long. I mean, come on. You know what I mean. <laughs> so it's mostly dry. And I'm going to grab some gesso, which I keep in a little um, Tupperware. A container nearby so I can always have a little bit um, on hand and I'm just gently applying a little bit of gesso here and there. I'm not going to leave it like that it's just because I want to apply some brighter colors and contrasting colors later on so I want to make sure that I have a, a neutral base for the colors to pop because obviously if I apply them straight over all those um, that busyness if that's a word, <laughs> if not, I just made it up, then um, the colors are not going to be at their full strength. So I'm just putting a bit of gesso and that will help later on. So I'm going to add a few streaks here and there just to highlight the those spiral shapes that I created with the dimensional paint. And I'm just putting a little bit in the middle, a bit on the outside, just to emphasize um, how curvy they are. And, and I'm also adding a little bit on the background, so again, just so I can apply stronger contrasting colors on top later on. And after a quick dry, just to make sure the gesso is completely okay to paint over, I'm going to use the same pink I had before and I'm just applying it. So you see how strong that pink is? If I hadn't applied the gesso first, then it would have looked more like a darker pink, maybe a bit of a purple as well, just because I would have put it over yellow and greens and blues. And I'm doing the same with a little bit of a sort of, I think this is a cadmium yellow. It's kind of like a, a really bright orange, absolutely gorgeous. It just pops like crazy with those pinks and the blues in the background, it's 
awesome. And then I was thinking mm, a bit of a blue would be lovely. This is a bit of a kind of bluey, kind of mauve, purpley color. Um, again, I put all the names on the blog post so you can check it out if you like. These are my favorite paints, I absolutely love them. Again, I've used the word absolutely. What's wrong with me today? <laughs> I've just, um, you know, I should just get out of my PJs and just get moving because my brain's standing too much, it seems. Must be all that peanut butter. And now I'm using another one of my favorites, which is a, a blue green iridescent paint. Gorgeous. This is so gorgeous. It's hard not to apply it everywhere because it looks so beautiful. And it gives you a really nice shine. It doesn't show that much from the top here because the light's not really hitting the pages. But uh, once you move the pages into the light, it's stunning. And uh, this is the same kind of paint except that it's more of a red kind of um, fuchsia color. Again, iridescent. A lot stronger than the blue as you can see so I'm using it to highlight some areas and um, go over some of the previous colors and then I'm sort of applying that uh, pinky color all the way around to sort of create a bit of a border a bit of a frame around my pages it looks so stunning And the pages are very shiny as well now with all that iridescent. Now I'm going to use a white Sharpie. This is the oil based version because um, I do like how it stays a little bit shiny when it's dry. I had a bit of trouble getting it going but almost there. And um, yes, the the oil based version with the pink band is a little bit shiny when it's um, when it's dry so it's an effect that can be interesting and the water based version stays matte but I didn't I wanted to do fairly thick dots so I wanted to use the fat one here that I've got and then I'm just adding a few doodles and squiggly lines just having fun with it not really thinking too much just you know adding a few details to make a few areas pop It's a lot of fun. And the rain is still falling here in Sydney. The wind's picking up a bit. It's just so nice to be all cozy in the studio. <laughs> and now um, off camera, I slightly traced um, some words with a pencil. Just to echo the theme of today where everything is a-okay. Yay! <laughs> It's so nice to just have a day where you can really feel chilled and relax. It's just lovely. It should always be like that, but it's not always like that, of course. And I'm going over those letters with a thicker Sharpie just to make them a little bit stronger and then adding a bit more emphasis on the left side of each letter just to get a bit more of a sort of calligraphy effect, I guess. And to make the words pop off the page a little bit more. It's very simple and you know if you practice a little bit then you can really add beautiful writing on your pages. Not that this is that special but I like it. And there we go we have my well we have finished pages and this is a bit of a close-up so you can really see what's going on here can still see a lot of details from the background and the three-dimensional paint is still it's raised a little bit and absolutely again use that word absolutely love the results I didn't know where I was going and it's not really a chilled page after all it's quite dynamic just I can't help it it seems but if you really enjoyed that then uh, please do subscribe and come over to the blog to say just to the blob my god to the blog and say hello and if you're interested in my book and tutorials please check them out on minibondi.com and i'll see you very soon friends bye for now